Welcome to my colorful glam zombie boy. Let's jump right into it. Starting off, I'm using this Becca primer because it's really sticky and I'm applying all of the base colors with shadows. For this look, I'm using the Urban Decay Electric Palette with a short bristled but densely packed flat top brush from Sonia Kashuk. This really helped deliver prime vibrancy. I try using the green and for some reason my skin just would not accept it. I even switched to the Kat Von D palette and it still wouldn't stick, so we switched to teal. And try not to inhale any of the dust because there will be some kickoff and fallout. So I'm randomly placing the colors all over my face, making sure to use a large blending brush. This one is from Morphe to blend all of the colors in bit together. I'm using a third color in between each color to help blend them together. For instance, between this blue and orange, I'm using a green. Between the blue and pink, I'm using purple. And between the yellow and the pink, I'm using orange. This really makes blending a lot easier. Now is the point where I had to take off my sweater and it was really cold. But I needed to get some color on my traps, so here we are. So I just continued to mix around the colors and bring them all the way down to my neck. I envisioned wearing this look with a crew neck t-shirt, so I figured that was about as far as I needed to go. I used a dark blue around some of my contour areas just to give my face a little bit more definition before I added in all the details. Because it is such a highly detailed look, I drew like a map using a grey uh, body paint to just map out some of the details. If you mess up, it's a lot easier to cover the grey with more eyeshadow, whereas if you do it with black, you'll have to wipe off the whole area and start from the base shadow and then reapply the black, so it's easier. I started off by just mapping out some of the areas in black that were really simple and basic shapes before moving on to detail. I was a little bit overwhelmed about where to start because there was so much detail, so I figured it was actually best just to start in small sections working from the top of my head all the way downwards. This large circle here is a bug because he does have bugs on his brain. I actually ended up moving mine a little bit more forward because I have my hair and I didn't feel like doing a full bald cap look for this. You can adjust any of the images to fit your face and what you're looking for. So using black body paint, I'm just filling in some of the large areas just to kind of cancel them out before I go into all of the little detail. So to get the detail of the brain, I'm first going around each of the little sections using a white body paint and tapping out the edges to try and blend it out. To make the edges a little bit softer, I then use a flat detail shading brush to go over the white areas using a white eyeshadow to blend it into the color a little bit better. This will help give the illusion of fullness for each little brain section. I'm then using a smaller flat shading brush and going over each of the black lines to add more depth and make it really look like those areas are receding. Because the skull is in front of the brain, I'm then going in and heavily shadowing along the edge of the skull line. I'm also using little lines with my eyeliner to really darken up the area and give the illusion it's further behind the skull. Because the skull is forward, I'm doing a white line along the edge to really show how raised it is, along with some black shadow just slightly, lightly placed below the white line. Next, I'm adding a whole bunch of little cracks and making sure that every single time the crack line goes over the white area, I'm doing it at an angle to show that it has some depth and definition and is raised from the rest of the skull. Using black shadow, I'm going over top of each of the little cracks and extending them to give, make them have a little bit more depth. He does have a lot of shadow detail going on in the top half of his skull, so I'm adding those throughout the areas, as well as the expression lines between the nose. Even though it's a skull, he's got all of those little anger expression lines. I'm also adding some more details along the sides of the skull. He does have this repeated dotted line 
that mimics almost like a spider web happening throughout the skull. So I just added those there. And now we're finally going back to the bug so that it looks like it's on top of the brain and the skull by adding shadows to make the bug look round, as well as shadows underneath the bug to make it look like it's on top of the brain. For all of the appendages, I'm first outlining them in white so that when I go over it with black, only subtle bits of the white pop out, giving it highlight and putting all the legs and the antennas on top of the skull and the brain. If you do happen to go over the white too much, like I did in this area, you can just easily go in and just touch up a little bit more of the white on top of that area. I'm adding some black shadow around my eyes to get further depth to the eye sockets, as well as bring the black all the way down my eyelid and up around my eye. Since I didn't want to put um, body paint that close to my eye, I mean you could, but I just didn't feel like it. I'm also then going with my eyeliner and cleaning up the edges around the eye sockets as well as adding in cracks and adding in some more details. I'm also adding in some depth to all the little spider web marks just to make it seem a little bit more defined and detailed. For the temples I'm adding most of the shadow closest to the bone part and fading it backwards so that it really kind of recedes like a temple would. I'm then going to outline them and add highlight around each so that the bone really looks like it's popping up and then adding a little bit of black shadow around the white highlight so to show that it's really raised. Going around the eyes also with some black eyeshadow and around the sockets because it is really just the edge of the bone so you want it to look like the edge of a skull rather than just two black holes in the skull. And again with the highlight just to show where the edge of the skull actually is. So moving on to this side of my jaw, I'm just drawing all the little bones, adding highlights, and to be honest, really going in there and adding detail because I'm avoiding getting to the teeth. I'm not really sure why I didn't want to do it, I just didn't want to do the teeth for some reason. If you actually look at the unedited footage, there's a lot of times where I'm just going over the same areas over and over again just to avoid that getting to the teeth. Um, but I'm adding shadow and highlights around each part of the bones, just like I am for every other area of the face. Dance party slash avoidance of teeth. If you're curious, the eyeliner I'm using throughout this video is the Shuamora Calligraphy Pen. It's my favorite eyeliner because the bristle on it are so precise and they never get bent out of shape and they never dry out. It also has a little area like where you can see the cartridge so you know when it's empty and when it's empty you just put in a new one which is great because sometimes my eyeliners run out and I'm like do you just suck or are you empty? Anyway I finally got to the teeth and I wasn't paying attention to the camera so most of it is actually out of the frame but you will see it when you get to the other side. Basically what I'm doing is adding shadow to the bottom of the teeth in a little V pattern and dragging that shadow downwards to blend it out. I'm also, when doing the line in between the teeth, instead of doing a straight line, it's best to draw around each tooth. It makes it look a little bit more realistic rather than the very comical straight line going through the teeth. Going around his, the corner of his ear is a centipede. I couldn't draw the body because I have hair there, but 
but I mimicked the body shape along his ear since he does also seem to have these little strike patterns and little V marks going down the side of the ear. I continued doing the same thing I did on the other side for the jaw. As you can see, some of the eyeliner is not fully covering the gray pattern, but that's okay because since you do add the highlights, it ends up covering some of the gray, so either way it all gets kind of covered. So you don't have to worry about making like really thick black lines to cover all the gray. So here with the teeth, you can see a little bit better. I add shadow first to outline all the teeth, and then I just add some shape around each tooth with eyeshadow. Light, a little bit more light-handed on the top row of teeth and a little bit heavier on the bottom row of teeth. You may notice that there's two different sets of teeth in this image. The center teeth did not seem to have as much detail, so I kind of stuck with those being lines, whereas the side teeth had a little bit more detail and a little bit more of a classic skull shape. So again with the center eyeliner, I rounded out each tooth before giving lines and details to them. And then I put the lines in between the teeth and the bottom teeth have kind of little upside down V's attached to the line and the top teeth I did little Y shapes not attaching it to the line. Again adding highlight and shadow to everywhere that I have at the edge of a skull just to give more detail and definition tapping out the edges so it's not as harsh. For the vertebrae on the neck I actually kind of messed up this a little bit but it, as long as you just kind of go with it, it works out. When I was drawing the base shape, I just did a whole bunch of W's and then did a little bit more of a detailed image with the black liner. For the neck, it does look like he has a bunch of torn skin going through the neck area. So what was really important for this area was making sure you could keep track of which pieces of skin were on top of other pieces of skin so that everything connected properly. This doesn't match up perfectly to his tattoos, but it's mostly just because I was trying to fill the space that I have on my neck. So it's not quite as detailed as I still wanted some of the color showing through and just get the basic shapes. This is another little bug. I'll be doing it the same way I did on my forehead, leaving it until I have completed the rest of the neck. So I just added in some extra little skin pieces to where I thought there was empty space. Now for the shadowing, what's really important to keep track of which pieces of skin are on top of other pieces of skin, you wanna put shadow around each piece of skin, but the parts that go on top of the other pieces of skin have shadow overlapping the bottom piece of skin just to show which ones are on top and which ones are on the bottom. This really helps to add to the definition and the detail of all the pieces, whereas before it was just a whole bunch of scattered lines. And who wouldn't want to make this lovely frog face? It was the only way I could manage to get the detail underneath my chin because it was so difficult seeing down there. Luckily, it is a secret talent of mine, a frog chin. So for all of these circles that are around the neck, to me they're just like black little holes into the abyss of the torn skin, so I just made sure to darken them up really well. For the vertebrae, because they are one stacked on top of the other, I just made sure to give some good shading underneath each vertebrae. I didn't want them to connect in the middle, but since the shadow just kind of did, I just made sure to go over that area with the highlight. I also made sure to put shadow along all of the stretch marks at the bottom of the neck that really gives the illusion that the skin is being stretched out. For the highlight, I ran it through the center of all the vertebrae as well as on the edges on the high parts that would stand out. For the ripped skin, I didn't put them on every single piece, mostly just the forefront pieces of skin as well as large areas of skin. And again, the bug is done exactly the same way that I did on my brain. <laughs> For the other side of my neck, there's a grenade in the middle of all the tangled skin, so I made sure to outline that first. I honestly don't think I did that great of a job with the grenade, but it is what it is. 
once it had all the shading and everything, I think it ended up looking pretty good. You might also notice that my torn pieces of skin are not looking as good on this side of the neck, but I was getting kind of tired and, you know, that shading and highlighting, it, it really does just fix everything. So here you can see I just put the back side of the centipede going down my neck. It's just two lines with a bunch of V's shaped in it. So before getting to the grenade, I did the same thing as the other side of the neck, shading around each and every torn piece of skin, making sure to remember which pieces of skin were on top of other pieces of skin, and shading accordingly. Then I filled in the center with black body paint and started to add in all of the little highlights and shadows that you would find in the grenade and honestly this just kind of made it look a lot better. So I was feeling a lot better about it at this point. Then I used the eyeliner, added in some more detail marks throughout the neck also re-outlined the grenades since the shadows and the highlights and everything kind of blended out the edges a little bit. I added, decided to add in a little bit more detail with the shadow. Added in some more detail with the stretched skin. And of course, highlights. Highlights everywhere. I lined my eyes with some black pencil just to make sure that it, everything was black and voila, finally done. Except then I decided I needed lashes. So that's it. Thanks for watching my colorful zombie boy. I hope that you maybe learned a new technique or something interesting. Follow me on Instagram at AppianaCam, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Ah. <laughs>